Well, this is an interesting turn of events. The Marvels, Marvel Studios, knew the movie was in trouble before release. Disney blamed for streaming push. I mean, very clearly it was in trouble. Very obviously. Of, yeah, of course it was. For goodness sake. Like, very evidently it was in trouble. This was never going to be doing well. This actually comes to us from an article uh, over on The Hollywood Reporter, which is quite illuminating, one might say. Uh, Marvel Studios taking stock of strategy amid the Marvel's meltdown. Look at that for a headline. Who'd have thought all of these mainstream media outlets would be saying this type of stuff? So here's the Cliff Notes version, anyway. During its opening weekend, the Marvel's made only $46.1 $46 million at the North America box office. That's terrible. Monday wasn't any better with a 2.4 million haul. That's a drop off of 74%. That actually puts the movie in the same ballpark as Dark Phoenix, Birds of Prey, and Morbius. <laughs> Fucking Morbius. Ah, that film. So very, 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 very bad. Not a small amount of bad, that's very bad. So according to Hollywood Reporter, Marvel Studios and Disney were well aware the Marvels was in trouble before it hit the big screen. That's a direct quote. The trade doesn't elaborate on their concerns, but notes there was also a recognition that Feige and his team needed time to take a stock of their theatrical tent poles. Interesting. It's interesting that these once uh, very Marvel-friendly outlets are now saying this kind of stuff. So this lines up with recent comments made by Bob Iger, which saw him suggest that the studio as a whole has lost focus as part of a quantity over quality approach to producing content. Uh, and that came as a result of Bob Chapek's attempts for Disney+, Plus, basically, which was Bob Iger's actual plan in the first place, but whatever. So unsurprisingly, that's a direct quote from the article as well, Feige and his team felt this mandate keenly to the detriment of Marvel's movies. So that's all to do with the streaming push. Which we can see here. So, But it wasn't the first warning signs that something was amiss within Marvel in terms of quality control as Feige's team went into overdrive producing shows for streaming. Features Eternals and Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania were also slapped with B cinema scores while audiences began complaining about keeping up with increasing numbers of shows on Disney Plus to understand the overarching MCU. That's actually not the main reason. People, it's, it's beyond me. You get this article from The Hollywood Reporter and they miss the point entirely. It's not the fact that there's lots to cover. It's the fact that it was all shit as well. People are happy to keep watching stuff if, it, if it's good. The thing was, it wasn't good. None of this stuff was good. These people completely missed the point. Now they say behind the scenes Marvel Studios and Disney were well aware the Marvels was in trouble before it hit the big screen. There was also a recognition that Feige and his team needed time to take a stock of their theatrical tent poles. Sources tell The Hollywood Reporter. On November 8th, Bob Iger said during an on an earnings call that Disney's movie empire has lost focus because of an emphasis on quality over Quantity over quality in the rush to feed Disney Plus. Um, but again, that wasn't it. Don't get me wrong, that's part of it. But it's not all of it. The, the, this is not the reason why all of this is tanked. It's that you're producing shit as well. So a day later, Marvel and Disney revealed that they were scaling back the number of superhero films they will release in 2024 from three to one. That news was made at the end of the SAG after strike, and while the work stoppage, which shut down production on Deadpool 3, is certainly part of the reason for some of the date changes, it wasn't the only one, sources say. Sean Levy, Ryan Reynolds, Deadpool 3 will be Marvel and Disney's sole superhero offering in 2024. I guess that's them going right back to the drawing board. And we're now open on July 26th instead of May the 3rd. The higher profile threequel, which co stars Hugh Jackman as Wolverine, is the first Deadpool to be released by Disney. Obviously, yeah, we know all of this. Um, and then they've delayed Captain America New World Order. That's going back for major reshoots. I mean, it's delayed nine months, by the way, guys. So, yeah, massive reshoots. And then Blade. I mean, that's been, been pushed back another nine months. I mean, it's never happening. This film 
Goodness me. Both Blade and Thunderbolts were planning uh, on going into production this past summer, but did not have scripts that were ready in time. I mean, that's just a joke. Rather than being a straight-up sequel to the billion-dollar blockbuster Captain Marvel, the Marvels is something of a mashup. Ugh. And we have this. Why not simply make Captain Marvel 2? Yeah, I wonder why. That billion-dollar movie. It's not a billion dollar, is it? Why produce the Marvels when your audience identified, empathised, and even hero identified with Brie Larson's character? More importantly, why offer people similar or the same characters and stories that are on Disney Plus if you expect them to go to a theatre together? Disney Marvel diluted their product, says a film producer. Of course, a picture works or fails for other reasons too, but losing so much value picture over picture is rare and hard to do. No, they just started producing garbage and shoving the same archetype of feminist bitch down everyone's throat and people were sick of it. Obviously. Or, again, why not produce a sequel to that movie? Maybe, ladies and gents, maybe it's because that movie didn't actually make that much money. And we have this. Uh, notes Comscore box office analyst Paul de Garabedian. Uh, the uneven performance of all superhero films in recent years should be a wake-up call in terms of how these films are conceived, executed and marketed moving forwards. Yes. 100% yes. Now, the Marvels is, well, it took worse uh, than The Flash. So, the Marvels took, like, what was the total again? Like, 40-odd million dollars? Wasn't very much money. Uh, 2.4 million. 46.1 million dollars in North America. The Flash did 55 million dollars domestically and would limp, and I mean really seriously limp, to $270.6 million globally. So, this did worse than that. But yeah, apparently they knew. They already knew the Marvels was in trouble. They knew it was in trouble. Apparently, Kevin Feige says. I mean, yeah. Understandably, obviously it was going to be in trouble. This movie was never going to do particularly well. I don't know why it was... Uh, it's beyond me, why... Uh, they decided to make this movie in the first place as a sequel to a bunch of shows no one was interested in. Oh, God, whatever. I'm taught, I, I'm just rambling because I'm angry about this piece of junk film that I had to watch for you guys. Anyway, all the delays, hopefully it means they're going to get back to making some good stuff again. Because again, and I repeat, and I've said this in multiple videos now, I'm going to keep repeating it. Disney has single-handedly destroyed two of the most profitable film franchises in history. Let that sink in. That's very hard to do. Star Wars. Marvel. Two of the most profitable film franchises in history. Marvel is the most profitable film franchise in, in history. And they have single-handedly destroyed both of those franchises. Unbelievable. Unbelievable.